In this video, we are going to take a look at Adobe Illustrator. To open up Adobe Illustrator, you can either come to your Finder, and under Applications, you can choose Adobe Illustrator, and double-click. But as we're going to be using this program a lot in this course, I suggest you put Adobe Illustrator into your dock. The dock is this set of icons here. I've got mine on my left, but you probably have yours on the bottom of your screen. In order to put Adobe Illustrator in your dock like I have it here, when you're in the Applications folder, click on the Adobe Illustrator name. You can see this icon here. If I click and drag this icon and drag it into the dock, I can place it in here and you'll see that the when I release it will put it in there. I'm not going to do that because I've already got it in. Once you have Adobe Illustrator in your dock like this, it becomes very easy to just click on that icon to open it. In this screen you can choose a recently closed Illustrator document to open up or you can create a new one. What I'd like you to do is click here to create a new document. In this window I can choose what size of document I want. I want us to work with a standard 8.5 by 11 inch document. As you can see here, I have that as a preset. However, if I did not see that as a recent file or a preset, I can always come over to the right hand side and type in the exact dimension that I want. I'm going to change the units from pixels to inches. In the width, I'm just going to type in 8.5 and in the height, I'm going to say 11 inches. I'm not going to make any other changes here. We'll talk about some of these other options in a later video. I'm just going to click Create to open up that new document. Now before we do anything else, let's make sure that we're looking at a similar workspace. I want you to come to the Window drop-down menu, and from Workspace here, this menu shows us that there are a number of different types of workspaces, and that's just a different arrangement of the interface for different tasks that you might be doing. I'd like you to choose Essentials Classic and you'll see something that looks a little like this. We're going to make a couple of small modifications to this layout. I'm going to close a couple of these panels. This libraries panel is not something that we're going to be using in this course. You'll notice that this tab here, if I click and drag on it, I can drag it outside of that tab group. I can now close it like that. I'm going to do the same thing here with this properties panel. This properties panel is very interesting but again I'm not going to use it in this class. I'm just going to drag it out like so and close it by clicking on that X. We're going to make one more small change to this interface before we do anything else. You'll notice that on the side here I now have these icons. These icons are going to be very useful to us in just a little bit but I want to reveal the names associated with these icons. So before I do anything else I'm going to take my cursor and I'm going to hover over the left edge of this icon stack. And You'll see I have a double-headed arrow. If I click with my mouse and drag to the left I will drag out the names associated with those icons. We have now changed the interface in a way that will be beneficial to us as we proceed. Let's save this workspace so that in the future if we need to reset to this layout we can easily. Let's come to the window drop down menu and we're going to come to the workspace option again and this time we are going to choose new workspace. What I'd like you to do is put in your name and you can call it workspace or just your name and I'm gonna say okay we've now saved this workspace now that we're all looking at the same thing let's take a quick tour around this interface I like to divide the Illustrator user face into five main categories the first and main section of our interface is the work area the work area is just this large part of this interface here that where we can see our artboard the artboard is the black rectangle in the middle of our work area the artboard is the area in which we will be assembling our artwork. But as you'll notice, there is areas off to the side. My areas off to the side look a little bit different from yours. Let me make mine look like yours. If I come to the Illustrator drop-down menu and choose Preferences, and then User Interface, there's an option here to allow the canvas color, that area around the artboard, to be either white, as I have it, or like this, as you probably see it on your screen. This is the default representation of the artboard. As we proceed, I may change that back and forth. Just know that that's a preference that you can turn on and off yourself. When we created this artboard, we saw that it was 8.5 by 11. But let's do something here. Let's zoom out of our artboard so that we change our viewpoint. I'm going to press Command and the minus button at the same time, several times, 
And as every time I do, I zoom out to the point where I can see my document like this. My document is still there, 8.5 by 11, but now you can see the amount of area, what Illustrator calls the canvas, but which I often just call the pasteboard. Now you might ask, why do you need all that extra room around your document? But well, as we'll see soon enough, we can have more than one document. In fact, I often create multiple artboards in one document, which is something we'll do in just a moment. Let's zoom back into our document. I could press the command button and the plus button at the same time and zoom in like so. But there is another keyboard shortcut that allows you to put the artboard in the center of your screen with one button click. Press command zero on your keyboard. You'll place the artboard in the center of your screen. The last thing I'm going to say about the artboard is that we can turn the visibility of the artboard on or off. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to come to the view drop down menu and from this menu I'm going to choose hide artboards. And when I do that, you can see that the black rectangle that defined that artboard has disappeared. And also the dark gray canvas is now disappeared as well. I prefer working like this myself. I sometimes find the lines around the artboard a little distracting. But this is all a matter of personal preference. If I want to bring that artboard back, I just have to come to the View drop-down menu and say Show Artboards. I'm going to hit Command-0 to put that back in the center of my screen. The next section that I want to talk about is the toolbox on the left-hand side. The toolbox has a number of tools. The most used tools are the ones at the top here, and as we get further down in our toolbox, we get into more obscure ones. However, there are a couple of very useful ones at the bottom here, these navigation tools, which we'll talk about in just a moment. The top set of tools are the selection tools. These first two, the black and white arrows, are the ones you are going to use the most often. These two down below are rarely used selection tools. We'll talk about the differences between these selection tools in just a moment. One thing you'll notice though is that one of these tools has a little white triangle. In fact, a number of these tools have little white triangles. What that means is that there is a subset of tools underneath the visible tool that we see. So for example, if I was to click and hold on the direct selection tool here, the white arrow, you will see that there's in fact another tool underneath that, this one called the group selection tool. If I was to do the same thing with the pen tool over here, click and hold, you'll see that there's in fact three sub-tools that are part of this set. Another thing you'll notice is that when I reveal these, this subset of tools, there's a button over here on the right-hand side. If I click on that button, I can float these tools out into their own panel so that I can see the main tool and the subset of tools all at the same time. If I don't want to see this, I can always close it by clicking on the X. We'll talk about almost all of these tools as we proceed through this course. Before we leave the toolbox though, I do want to draw your attention to this bottom section here where we see these two squares. These are the fill color and the stroke color respectively. We can change the fill color and stroke color of an object, and we'll talk about how to do that in just a little bit. But we also see this ability to color objects over here, which is the top of our panel stack. If I click on the color panel here, which looks a lot like the fill and stroke color indicators over here, and in fact that is what these are. What this highlights is that there is some duplication in our interface. Adobe is essentially saying if you can't remember how to do something one way, there is probably another way. If you're opening up Adobe Illustrator for the first time, you probably see this color panel like this. This is a minimized view of the panel. Illustrator is trying to save you some screen real estate by giving you these smaller versions. But as we're getting used to working with Illustrator, I want you to expand these panels. Every one of these panels has an option button right here to the right that if I click on, I can choose to show options. And when I do that, now I see the expanded version of that panel. And as we open up all these panels, you'll notice that all of these panels have an options button. And these options will be different for each panel. But just be aware that this is how we access a lot of the power of these panels. All these panels have some really amazing abilities, and we will get into these in a much bigger way in later lessons.
The last thing I want to draw your attention to is that the number of panels that I currently have open here are only a portion of the possible panels that I could be using. These are just part of the Essentials default workspace that we created earlier. But if there is a panel that I would like to work with, for example, say a typography panel, which there isn't one at the moment, I can open it if I come to the Windows drop-down menu, which brings us to the next section of our Illustrator interface, the drop-down panels here. If I click on this Windows drop-down menu, Menu, I can choose all sorts of different panels to open, including, if I go down far enough, the character panel, which allows me to work with typography. And there is the character panel. Now that has popped up in its own window. If I want to have this character panel as a part of the panel stack over here, I can just click on the name and drag it into the panel stack over here. And now this is available to me with its options right here in the panel stack. I can close it just by clicking on those double arrows. Now you'll notice that there was a couple of other panels that opened up with that character panel. This is part of the panel group. I don't need these open, so I can just click on the X here to close those. Let's return back up here to the drop-down menu. This window panel will be very useful for us, as I say, because it allows us to work with many other panels. There are several here that we will be talking about in much more depth, including the effect panel, which has a lot of interesting possibilities. But by far the most used drop-down panel option I find is the object drop-down panel. This allows us to do a lot of transformations to the objects that we create here in Illustrator. Um, and we can have a lot of fun with some of these options here. The final section that I want to talk about is this section just under the drop-down menu. This is called the control panel. This control panel is contextually sensitive, meaning it will change depending on what tool you have selected. Currently, I've got my pen tool selected, and you can see that it has given me certain options for the stroke weight, for example, and the brush style. But if I come over here to the toolbox and choose the type tool, for example, now you can see I get those options, plus the character and paragraph panels. If I click on character, you can see there's that character panel. So rather than having to come over to the character panel here, I could always open it from the control panel. This can be very useful, but just remember, we don't see the full set of options available to us. It just gives us the ones that are most likely to be used. Now that we know our interface, in the next video, we are going to start creating some shapes.